Everyone has heard of the Northeast Megalopolis, a group of cities connected up into a massive metropolitan area. It's home to some of the most iconic cities in all of America, New York, Boston, Philadelphia, Washington, D.C. When you think of the U.S., you're probably imagining one of these cities. But what if I told you there was a different megalopolis in the southern United States that could challenge it at some point in the future, which currently has a quarter of the Northeast population, and it's grown by over 900% in the last 70 years, compared to just 180% in the Northeast. So today I'm going to talk about the South's megalopolis of the future. Really quick though before that, I just wanted to ask if you would please consider subscribing to the channel right below this video. A simple subscriber helps out the channel a ton, and if you enjoy geography content and want to help me get to my goal of 100k, please consider hitting the subscribe button because it helps so much. So let's jump back to the basics. What is the South's megalopolis? Well, it's a line of five major metropolitan areas connected to each other to form one even larger metropolitan area. It can be seen very clearly on a light map of the United States if you look right there. It has a population of 11.8 million spread through every city, and is growing to become one of the most important megalopolises in the United States. So now that you know what it is, let's take a look at the major cities located in this area. Because a lot of people just do not know that some of these cities are connected into the megalopolis. So let's start with the southernmost point, which also happens to be the most populated city, Atlanta. It's known to be the 8th biggest metropolitan area in the United States at population of just over 6 million, above cities like Phoenix and Boston. It's home to the busiest airport in the world, the Hartsfield-Jackson-Atlanta International Airport. Over the last 70 years, it's grown 1,187% from just 513,000 in 1950, making it the third fastest growing city in the southeast megalopolis. Moving farther north, we have Greenville, South Carolina. This whole area is a lot bigger than people give it credit for and definitely adds to the megalopolis. It has a population of 529,000 in the metro area as of 2020 and has grown by 518% since 1950. Next up is Spartanburg, adding another 313k on its own to the population. Some consider this city in the same metropolitan area as Greenville, and it depends who you ask. But I felt like it should be appreciated on its own because it's a quite large city and people don't really notice that. Which seems to be a trend with a lot of cities in the south. Next up we have the second biggest metro in the megalopolis, that being Charlotte. I'll start by saying that I bet a lot of people watching this video had no idea Charlotte and Atlanta were so connected. They seem like they're states away from each other, but you can go from one city to the other without really leaving populated areas. Looking at a map, it's pretty clearly connected enough to be considered part of the megalopolis. So Charlotte has a population of just over 2 million, and it's grown 1,448 since 1950 when it had just 142,000 people. This makes it the second fastest growing metro area in the megalopolis, and if you do the math, it means over 90% of the growth in the area came after 1950, which is pretty crazy to think about. It's home to the second busiest airport in the megalopolis, and the sixth busiest in the U.S. It recently finished its third belt line around the city, and is continuing to grow even into South Carolina and places like Rock Hill. Next we have the Piedmont Triad, home to the cities of Winston-Salem, High Point, and Greensboro. If you consider it three different metros, Winston-Salem is the biggest and High Point is the smallest. Since 1950, these three cities have completely rose to relevance, but they aren't gaining population as fast as other cities in the megalopolis. Greensboro is growing the fastest currently, with a growth of 430% since 1950 when it had just 84,000 people. High Point has went from 39,000 to 114,000, and Winston-Salem has went from 145,000 to 509,000. Then finally, we end the list in the megalopolis with Raleigh-Durham. Starting with Durham, it has a metro population of 418,000, up 565% from 1950. At this point, it can easily be considered part of the Raleigh metro, which is where the name Raleigh-Durham comes from. Durham is also connected slightly to the college town of Chapel Hill, home to the University of North Carolina. So finally, we go to Raleigh. This metro has a population of 1.4 million people, making it the third largest in the megalopolis. But what really makes it amazing is the growth rate. In 1950, the metro had just 69,000 people meaning it was smaller than Durham at that time. It completely exploded in population, growing at an insane rate of 2,093%. It must have to do with being a capital city, but this whole area still just changed completely from what it was before. So now that we've run down exactly what this megalopolis is and what is in the megalopolis, you can see that the growth and rise to relevance is insane. It just goes to show the shift in America from the Rust Belt to the Sun Belt. If we look at the challenging Northeast Megalopolis, you can see that even there, the fastest growing city is Washington, D.C., 
which also happens to be the farthest south. And even then, the growth rate is just not impressive compared to the south. New York City has a growth rate of 150% since 1950, which is not even close to the slowest growing city in the southeast, Winston-Salem. So now let's look at the future of the Southeast Megalopolis, because showing you the growth rate on these cities, you'd think that it would have over 100 million come 70 years from now. But sadly, that's not the case. Over the past 10 years, the growth has slightly decreased in these cities, and though it's still crazy growth, it's not the same as the 1990s or times around then when the population was absolutely booming. If it continued on the same rate it did right now for 70 years, sure, it would become a major part of America and everyone would know what it is. But I definitely think it needs something else to make these cities known by everyone. The history that goes along with places like New York and Boston are just unmatched by something like Charlotte or Raleigh. Atlanta has the Superdome and the Aquarium, so it's holding its own. But my main worry is in North Carolina, where the cities just don't seem to have the notability or landmarks that make tourism flourish on an international level. One thing these areas could definitely use is some sports teams. I know Charlotte has the Panthers and the Hornets, but for most sports, the South as a whole has been completely scammed when it comes to expansion. Atlanta seems to be the place representing the whole megalopolis right now for a lot of sports. Even though Charlotte has a higher population than Pittsburgh, Indianapolis, St. Louis, Milwaukee, and so many more places that get their own sports teams. I will say, though, I would predict in 70 years, at least Charlotte and Raleigh will have teams in most of the major leagues. Now let's talk about the main question most people are asking watching this video. Will it ever pass the Northeast Megalopolis in population? Well, the safe answer here would be a quick no. Even though the growth rate in the South is so much more than the North, it still just isn't in the place where it would pass it without something changing. Maybe the Rust Belt and Northeast will continue to decline over the coming years, and all these cities will start to lose population. But at the current rate, it seems safe to say the Southeast Megalopolis will never pass the Northeast. Because even though the Southeast is way bigger than people think, the North Northeast is still absolutely massive. But even though that may not be its path, it's still safe to say the Southeast Megalopolis deserves some appreciation and respect. I hope because of this video you learned more about it and now know what's going on down there. Thanks for watching.